You see, I could have seen that base hit, but instead, I missed it. The Atlanta Braves probably were hitting one in the ninth inning. We were down one run, and that probably just scored in the tie run. But I missed it. Why did I miss it? Because the MLB takes too long. That's why. The Major League Baseball game takes entirely too long. How you doing, everyone? My name is Levi Schofield, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the MLB's viewership problem and what they've done this year to fix it. You see, we'll start out for where the MLB started. In 1876, in Cincinnati, the MLB was created. Now, why is that important? Because at the beginning of the MLB, viewers had to go to the game to watch. Now, fast forward, 2023, I can stream on almost any device a game. But the problem is, in 2022, the World Series, the viewership, 9 million, according to MLBrun.com. In 1978, a staggering 44 million viewers watched the World Series. How did we lose 35 plus million viewers? Well, I'll tell you why. The game's taking too long. In 1876, we started keeping statistics when the MLB was created in Cincinnati of things like hits, earned run average for pitchers, stolen bases, runs per game, the score, how long games took. In 2022, the average time for a Major League Baseball game, three hours and 11 minutes per MLB.com and Dimensional Insight. Now, why is that important? Because this year, an average game is two hours and 39 minutes. How did we cut so much time? I'll tell you. To fix the viewer problem, the MLB in it, in it implemented the pitch clock. You see, we need to talk about what the pitch clock is and how it's helping the game. The MLB said in 2022, we're going to initiate a pitch clock. Here's how the pitch clock works. The pitch clock gives a pitcher... 15 seconds when there's no runners on to pitch a ball. Now, there's a caveat to this. When a batter walks up, he has until the eight-second mark to be in the box looking at the pitcher ready to hit a ball. And then the pitcher has until the zero mark to pitch the ball. If the batter fails to be in the box ready to hit at the eight-second mark, well, what's going to happen is the umpire is going to give a little signal like this up to the press box. And the pitcher is awarded a strike. That hurts the batter. They're going to be ready. Now, if the pitcher fails to do it, the umpire is going to give the same signal, point at the pitcher, and give the batter a ball. Now we got a hitter's count. You see, when that's when no runners are on base. When runners are on base, we're going to give the pitcher a little bit more time to understand the situation, let the runner take his lead, and now the pitcher has 20 seconds to throw the pitch before the zero second mark, or the batter has until the eighth second mark to mess up and the pitcher is awarded a strike. Now, how did this shave so much time? Well, in 2022, a pitcher had an average between 35 and a minute and 15 seconds between pitches. That's a lot of lull time for viewers. That's the decline in viewership. No one has four hours to watch a baseball game. Now, where did it make a difference? Well, players aren't going to want to give up a striker ball. That's where the difference was made. Players are now getting in the batter's box, ready to go. The time between innings are shorter, and the players are getting up the bat. Today, we talked about what the MLB's done and how it's helped the game, but we didn't say what the viewership is like. The viewership this year is up 11% per ESPN's Sunday night baseball games. That's a plus if you ask me, because it was down 8% from 2021, the year prior. Today we talked about where the MLB started, what its problem was, how they were going to fix it, and how they actually implemented the process. Now, I think it's time that we up the numbers for viewership for baseball, because we all love America's pastime. Take our family out to the ballpark and ensure the great game of baseball is played forever. Thank you.